Hi, and great that you're watching this video on performing an IMAP migration. During this 20 minute video, we will look into migrating your mailboxes to Office 365 using the IMAP migration method. My name is Gijs Vlerakkers. This is the agenda for today. We already had our brief introduction. Next, we will move into the IMAP migration overview where we will look into the objective, the consideration and requirements of the IMAP migration. Next, we will move into the IMAP migration process where we will zoom in on the individual process steps and we will finish with a demonstration on the IMAP migration. So sit tight, let's get started. This is the IMAP migration overview. The objective of the IMAP migration is to provide a simple mail migration solution for small and medium sized businesses to move over to Office 365. While doing so, there are, however, some requirements and considerations you must take into account. First of all, the Exchange Online mailboxes must already exist. This allows your organization to choose an identity scenario that best suits your organization. You can create your users in Office 365, or you can synchronize your users from your on-premises Active Directory. Both identity scenarios work. Bottom line is, the mailboxes already need to exist in Office 365. Another consideration is that only mail items are migrated. The IMAP migration methodology does not provide a way to migrate calendar or contact information. The third consideration is that you can use IMAP migration for migrating mailboxes of hosted service providers. Often more than one customer is located at the hosted service provider platform and you can use the IMAP migration to migrate all the mailboxes of a particular customer to the Office 365 environment. IMAP is also very suitable for organizations that still run Exchange 2000 or earlier versions. The IMAP migration consists out of seven easy steps. The first three steps are the getting ready steps for the IMAP migration. Step four and step five are the steps where you actually perform the IMAP migration. These steps are repeatable in different batches. Step six is the step where you redirect the mail flow. And step seven is the step where you complete the IMAP migration. In the next few slides, we will zoom in further on the different steps. The first IMAP migration process step is where you prepare for the IMAP migration by creating an Exchange Online mailbox for each user that you will migrate. Before you can migrate mailbox data from the user's mailbox on the IMAP server, the user has to have an Exchange Online mailbox. Before you can create mailboxes with the customer domain, you need to add the customer domain to Office 365. During the migration, you need to provide the fully qualified domain name of the IMAP server that you will migrate mailbox data from. Use an IMAP client or the ping command to verify that you can use the fully qualified domain name to communicate with the IMAP server over the internet. You can also use the test migration server availability commandlet in the exchange management shell to verify connectivity. You may have to open ports in the firewall of the organization that hosts the IMAP server so network traffic originating from the Microsoft Data Center is allowed to enter the organization that hosts the IMAP server. Best practice is to create a dedicated migration admin user, assign sufficient permissions to that migration user, so that he can access mailboxes in the IMAP migration organization. The credentials in the CSV file must have the necessary permissions. The permissions required to access the user's mailboxes will be determined by the particular IMAP server. Before you start migrating mailboxes, it is recommended to change the DNS time to live settings on your current MX record. Change the settings to an interval such as 900 seconds, being 15 minutes. When you change the MX records to point to your Office 365 email organization after all mailboxes are migrated, the update of the MX record should propagate more quickly because of the shortened time to live interval. The second step in the IMAP migration process is the step where you create the CSV file for the IMAP migration. To do so, you will need to identify the group of users whose mailbox you want to migrate in an IMAP migration batch. Each row in a CSV file contains information necessary to connect to a mailbox in the IMAP messaging system. The following attributes are required in the CSV file. The email address. It specifies the user ID for the user's Exchange Online mailbox. Username, that specifies the logon name for the account to use to access the mailbox in the IMAP server. And the password, that specifies the password for the account in the user column. 
A CSV file for an IMAP migration can have a maximum of 50,000 rows. If you have to migrate email data for thousands of mailboxes, it's a good idea to migrate users in several smaller batches. Another best practice is to store the CSV file in a secure environment. The CSV file contains credentials of the migration admin user or of the individual users. Therefore, make sure to prevent compromising the CSV file to prevent unwanted access. The third step in the IMAP migration process is the step where you create the IMAP migration endpoint. The IMAP migration endpoint is a management object in Exchange Online that contains the connection settings for the source IMAP server. When you create a migration batch, the information in the migration endpoint is used to connect to the IMAP server. The migration endpoint also defines the number of mailboxes to migrate simultaneously during the initial synchronization and the number of mailboxes to sy synchronize simultaneously during incremental synchronization. Incremental synchronization occurs once every 24 hours after the initial synchronization has occurred. You can create the first IMAP migration endpoint when you create the first migration batch. We do however recommend you to create the migration endpoint before. When you create the migration endpoint, Exchange Online tests the connection to the IMAP server and the migration endpoint isn't created unless Exchange Online can successfully connect to your IMAP server. Creating the migration endpoint before the migration batch lets you troubleshoot and resolve connectivity issues in an early stage. Otherwise, you have to cancel the migration batch and resolve any connectivity issues before you can move forward. In step 4 and 5 of the IMAP migration process, you will create a migration batch and effectively start the migration batch. You can do this using the Exchange Online Admin Center or via Remote PowerShell. In both cases, you can use the migration endpoint created in the previous step. After you start the migration batch, the migration batch will be queued for migration. Best practice is to verify the status of the batch and confirm that it has started via the syncing status. By default, when you create an IMAP migration endpoint, it will support 20 maximum concurrent migrations and a maximum of 10 concurrent incremental synchronizations. In step 6 of the IMAP migration process, we will configure the MX record to point to Office 365. Until you change your MX record, email sent to the users is still routed to their mailbox in the IMAP messaging system. After a mailbox is successfully migrated, the mailbox on the IMAP server and the Exchange Online mailbox are synchronized once every 24 hours in a process called incremental synchronization. This process continues until you stop or delete the migration batch. When you configure your organization's MX records to point to Office 365 email organization, all mail is sent directly to the Exchange Online mailboxes. The change in DNS can take up to 72 hours to propagate globally. The change of the time to live setting in step 1 of the migration process will make sure the DNS changes are propagated more quickly. You can request the DNS provider to change the MX records, or you can use a control panel provided by your DNS provider to change the DNS settings yourself. It is also recommended to update DNS records like Autodiscover and the Sender Policy Framework. You will find their values in the Domains pane in the Office 365 Admin Center. You can even update these records before you change the MX records. That will make sure your users can connect to their mailboxes using the Outlook client while the migration is still in process. If you change the MX records approximately 30 minutes before the next incremental synchronization, you might not need to wait another 24 hours to do an extra incremental sync, as all mail is then delivered and synchronized into the Exchange Online mailbox. Step 7 is the last step of the IMAP migration process and the step where we delete the IMAP migration batches. After you change the MX records and verify that the email is being routed to Exchange Online mailboxes, you're ready to delete the migration batch. Before you delete the migration batch, please verify that email is being sent directly to Exchange Online mailboxes, all the users are using their Exchange Online mailboxes, full mailbox access and send as permissions are properly configured, that Exchange Online mailboxes have been synchronized at least once after mail began sent directly to them. So check if the last synced time field for the migration batch is more recent than the date and time when mail started being routed directly to the Exchange Online mailboxes. Although users are not affected by the deletion of the migration batch, you need to make sure that users are properly informed and involved in the process. Part of the involvement and communication is the distribution of the new passwords. Once the migration batch is deleted, 
you can backup and retire the on-premises mail infrastructure. Migration batches with a status of synced that have no administrator initiated activity for the last 90 days will be stopped automatically. And after that, they will be deleted after 30 days. We've heard a lot about the different steps in the IMAP migration process. Now it's time to go hands-on and see how it looks like. We will do this in a demo. This is the IMAP migration demo. Our first step is to log on into the Office 365 Admin Center. We do so by going to portal.microsoftonline.com. Here we log on with our administrator. Once we've logged on, we arrive at the Office 365 Admin Center. In the left pane, in Users and Groups, you can check if you currently already have users in your Office 365 environment. As you can see, I've already created a few users. If we need to create another user, we can use the Add or the Bulk Add button to add one user or a group of users. We can also check if the user has a license assigned. The license is required to get an email box. As you can see, this user has an email box. What you can also see is that the users currently still use their own Microsoft domain name. We can change that by providing their customer domain and we can do that in the Domains pane. In the Domains pane we can use Add a Domain. We go to the next step. And as I mentioned in the slides, this is a two-step verification process. We are now commencing step one. I'm adding Contoso.com. And now the wizard is providing me with instructions on how to prove ownership of this domain. I do not have a GoDaddy account, so I go to the general instructions. And as you can see, in the general instructions, you also have the TXT record and the MX record so that you can verify ownership of this domain. I can also always recommend to use the TXT record instead of the MX record. Once you have created the users and verified that their mailboxes exist, it's time to create a CSV file. As you can see, I've already done that. This CSV file contains three columns, email address, username and password. The email address is the email address of the Exchange Online mailbox. The username is the username of the user in the IMAP messaging system. The password is the corresponding password with the username. This is the CSV file that we need to upload to start the migration. We are back in the Office 365 Admin Center. For our step 3, we are going to create a migration endpoint. Therefore, we migrate to the Exchange Admin Center. In the Exchange Admin Center, we move to Migration. That is where we can create the Migration Endpoint. Migration Endpoints can be created by clicking the dots and clicking on Migration Endpoints. By hitting the plus sign, we can create a new Migration Endpoint. I'm choosing a Migration Endpoint based on IMAP and I click Next. I use the IMAP server. This is the IMAP server that I've previously looked up at support.google.com. The rest is OK for me. I'm giving it a name and I'm changing the maximum concurrent migrations and the maximum concurrent incremental syncs. I'm clicking New to finish the creation of the IMAP migration endpoint. Now I'm done. The IMAP migration endpoint is created and ready to be used in the next step. I've just created the migration endpoint. Now I'm back in the Exchange Admin Center. As you can see, I'm in the migration pane, and here I can start a new migration batch. I'm going to choose for my migration batch to Exchange Online. A wizard opens, and in the new migration batch wizard, I can choose IMAP migration. I click Next. In this step, I provide the CSV file I've created in step 2. The CSV file is located over here, and when I open it, the migration wizard will automatically detect that I will migrate four email boxes. I click Next. This is the migration endpoint. I click Next. And this is the uh, step where I can change the name of the migration batch. IMAP is just fine for me. I can also exclude folders. There's no need for me to exclude any folders, so I click Next. In this step, I can choose to automatically start the migration batch right now, or I can start it manually later. Also, I can specify the user that receives the reports once the migration batch is complete. 
I'm going to click New to start the migration batch. We will soon be back into the migration pane. Important is to check that the status is now set to Syncing. Also, you will find an alert where it states that the migration batch is set for queue. I'm back in the Exchange Admin Center in the migration pane, and as you can see, the current status of the IMAP migration is that it's completely synced. So the initial synchronization has to place. That means that every um, 24 hours, uh, changed items from the current IMAP messaging system will be synchronized via the incremental synchronization. Uh, let's have a look at the status. So we double click on the IMAP migration itself, and we uh, navigate into the migration reports, and there we can check the migration report of this IMAP migration batch. I'm opening the CSV file and in the CSV file I will be able to check the status of the migration. So here you can see Katie has been migrated and has uh, 69 of the mail items have been migrated to her exchange online mailbox. For Syrah 61 items have been migrated. So let's have a look. And let's go to the mailbox of Sarah. I'm logged on as Sarah, since Sarah is the administrator. And I can go and check her Outlook mailbox via Outlook Web App. And here, I hopefully see 61 of the items that have been migrated or synchronized from the IMAP messaging system to the Exchange Online system. And also what you can see is that the report of the migration batch has been sent to Sarah in this case. And here you can see that Sarah has just received the information on the IMAP migration. I'm back in the Exchange Admin Center. I'm also in the migration pane. And I've updated the MX records. And that means that all new email sent to my users is not directly sent to their Exchange Online mailboxes. No email is delivered anymore to the IMAP messaging system on premises. This means that I need to wait for one last synchronization cycle. The last synchronization cycle just occurred. And that means that all email is now in the Exchange Online environment. This allows me to delete the migration batch so that I can decommission my on-premises Exchange environment and move forward using Exchange Online. Deleting the migration batch is easy. You select the migration batch and you hit the delete button. And that's basically all. So, now the migration batch is deleted, and we are good to go with Office 365. So, that's the end of the demonstration. That's also the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching this video, and good luck in migrating using the IMAP migration process.